In this video, we're going to take a look at testing a claim about two samples when we are dealing with standard deviation and variance. Now, this uh, particular test is going to require us to look at a new type of distribution. And so let's just briefly recall some things about the distributions we have looked at. So our normal distribution, it has a mean of zero, or at least a standard normal distribution. It's bell-shaped, symmetric, a student T distribution, also bell-shaped, has more variation for small sample sizes. Uh, it's based on degrees of freedom, uh, so and those degrees of freedom are based on the sample size. We had our chi-squared distribution that looked maybe something like this. Also, so the chi-squared distribution was always zero or positive and was never negative. It was also based on degrees of freedom. The more degrees of freedom we got, the more normal it looked. And so now we have this F distribution, which is going to still be chi-squared-ish. This is not symmetric. It's skewed to the right. Our values can be zero or positive and neg never negative. So here's one interesting thing that is um, going to set this one apart a little bit, and that is that it differs based on two different degrees of freedom. So we'll have a degree of freedom associated with the top and with the bottom. All right, so our hypothesis test for standard deviation or variance, we have the sample variance, S1, we determine which is our first sample and second sample, not based on the order that they're presented, but based on the actual sample variances. So the sample variance that is larger, the larger of the two sample variances, that will be sample one, and the smaller of the two sample variances will be sample two. Right? So sample one could be presented second um, if it has a larger sample variance. Um, and we are trying to say something about the population standard deviations of those. Right. So when we are comparing our two population standard deviations, our null hypothesis is going to be that the standard deviations are equal. Our alternative will either be that they are not equal or that the first is greater than the second. Uh, I should cross out this last one, because it's not really used, right? Why would we uh, not say that the standard deviation one is less than standard deviation two? Why wouldn't we use that? Well, based on the way we are choosing this, we are choosing the standard deviation or variance one to be the larger of the two, so we would never ever have evidence of having a smaller value here. Uh, if we're always choosing our sample uh, one to be the larger of the two. So sample one has a larger variance by choice. So we would never have evidence of this alternative. Our test statistic is really easy to calculate even without um, StatDisk or a calculator if we know the sample uh, variances. We take the larger variance divided by the smaller variance. So it's the larger variance over the smaller variance. One thing we should note there is that since we have the larger over the smaller, then this number is always going to be at least one. Right? If we have a larger number divided by a smaller number, you're going to get a number that is at least one. If they're not the same, it's going to be more than one. For this, we have a degrees of freedom that's associated with the numerator. Our numerator degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size associated with S1. And our denominator degrees of freedom 
is one less than the sample size associated with S2. Perfect. The way we go about interpreting uh, the associated confidence interval is we look at whether or not one is contained in that confidence interval because instead of saying something about the um, difference between the two values, we're now going to be looking at the ratio of the two values. And so we get some number is smaller than that ratio, it's less than some other number. So if those two values are equal, then that ratio would be one. And so if one is in there, it's reasonable to believe that the means um, that the ratio of the two standard deviations is one. So it's reasonable to believe there's no difference uh, between those two. If it contains only values greater than one, then there's evidence that the first population standard deviation is greater than the second. Um, if it's only values less than one, then you've probably interchanged your values because that shouldn't really happen. It would suggest that your first population is smaller than your second, has a uh, standard deviation smaller than the second. In StatDisk, we will go through this process. So we use the standard deviation to samples. We just need to input the sample sizes and sample standard deviation for each of those, uh, the significance level, and we choose our alternative hypothesis. So, all right, let's go through and look at an example. A study was conducted on body temperatures of men and women at 8 a.m. on a particular day. The summary statistics are shown below. Women, uh, there were 59 women in the study. They had a mean of 97.45 and a standard deviation of 0.66. For men, there were 11 in the study. They, those 11 men had a mean temperature of 97.69 and a standard deviation of 0 0.89. So we want to use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that men have body temperatures that vary more than women. So we should decide which is sample 1 and sample 2. And so the way we decide that is we look at our two standard deviations, and the one that is larger is going to be sample 1. So this will be sample 1. And then the uh, data about women would be sample 2. All right, so we have sample one and sample two. The claim is that men, which is sample one, their temperatures vary more. So when we're talking about how much something varies, we're talking about a standard deviation or a variance. So men's temperatures vary more than women. And the opposite is, no, they don't. They're actually less than or equal to that of women. The null hypothesis is always that one value equals another, and our alternative is going to be this right up here. It's always the one, either the claim or the counterclaim, that does not include the equal sign. So this one included equals, so that's not the counterclaim or not the alternative hypothesis. Instead, that's our alternative hypothesis. So, for sample one, we are going to go to StatDisk, and we are going to input N1 is the information about men, so there are 11, and S1 is 0.89. For women, the information is S1, S2, sorry, N2, is equal to 59, and S2 is 0.66. All right, so let's go to StatDisk. In StatDisk, we're going to choose analysis. We're doing a hypothesis test. This hypothesis test is dealing with a standard deviation, uh, and we have two different samples in our standard deviation. So we're going to choose standard deviation, two samples, 
The alternative hypothesis was population standard deviation 1 is actually greater than population standard deviation 2. Right? That the variance among uh, men was greater than the variance among women. Uh, the significance level was 0 0.05, so that was given there. For men, the information here is 11 and 0.89. So we have 11 and 0.89. For women, the associated information was 59 and 0.66. So we input our information and evaluate. And after we do that, we get a p-value of 0 0.077, right? So there's our p-value, 0 0.077. And we observe that that p-value is greater than 0 0.05. If the p-value is high, the null will fly, so we fail to reject the null. We do not have evidence of the alternative, so it is still reasonable to believe that the variation in temperatures between among men is the same as the variation uh, among of temperatures among women. We can also look at some of this other stuff here. So notice this also has a 90% confidence interval. Um, and with that 90% confidence interval, standard deviation 1 divided by standard deviation 2. Right there, we have 0.954. is less than standard deviation 1 over standard deviation 2 is less than 2.184. Since 1 is contained in this confidence interval, so sigma 1 over sigma 2 equals 1 is reasonable, which would say that sigma 1 equals sigma 2 is reasonable. Now, that's not to say that sigma 1, the standard deviation 1, is for sure equal to standard deviation 2. If this value was, on the right-hand side, if this value was 0.96, then we would get sigma 1 is smaller than sigma 2, right? And that's in 0.96 is also in the confidence interval. If this value was a 2, then we would get sigma 1 is twice as big as uh, sigma 2, and 2 is also in the confidence interval. So when we're saying 1 is in the confidence interval, we're not saying it's for sure that these two things are equal. We're just saying that's reasonable as our any of the other conclusions, but we don't have evidence of the alternative explicitly. All right, that is it for chapter nine. We will talk to you guys later.